All right, well, we're here with Commander Chris Hadfield as part of the Nemo 14 mission crew. Chris, how is it going down there? It's going great, Heather. Uh, over there, Steve is talking to Andrew and to Tom outside. Uh, Nate and James are keeping the place running perfectly. And as the commander of this, what's important to me is that everyone is prepared for the really good parts, but also prepared for when they get really tired or they miss their family or they feel sick or something. And all of them will go through all those cycles over two weeks. So uh, I'm just trying to be ready for all of the surprises this place will throw at us, um, what it will mean for us to get our job done, but really, most importantly, what it will mean for us as people to have had an experience to do something like this and how we will take it forward to the other things we do with our lives. Well, what a life living underwater. So how far down are you? We're well underneath the surface. We're about uh, 50 or 60 feet down right here. And the sea floor is even below me. It's way below the surface. It even starts to get dark a little bit. And we're several miles off the coast of Florida. And this is a really great facility they have set up. It's very evocative of being on a space station or a spaceship where you are protected in a little bubble of air surrounded by something that would otherwise kill people. So you really get that feeling of, of isolation, of teamwork, of, of where you are. Uh, and so to try and lead a group of these folks to try and help make sure that everything gets done properly, it's a lot of the same challenges that the commander is facing on board the space station today and that the commanders in the future will have a chance to do. So it's a great place to think about that to develop techniques to do that and to train for it directly. So tell us a little bit about what the mission objectives are. When you build or make use of something like Aquarius in the bottom of the ocean, it really serves a couple purposes. One is just on its own, it's like a space station. So all the things you do inside, you can recreate a bunch of them here. The, the environment, the daily pattern, how you communicate with mission control, how the crew interacts. So it's very much inside like a space station. And then outside for the two weeks, uh, it's as if you landed a spaceship on the surface of another planet or a moon. And how do you explore? What is the right spacesuit design? How do you go out and, and fix something? How something as mundane as how steep should a ladder be? Uh, or where should the center of gravity of your spacesuit be? Those sound trivial, but they, they're the difference between success and failure. And once you're there, you can't change them. So somewhere you have to invent and then test those things. We'll be doing that with a bunch of different configurations. And then the last part of it, it's as if we've landed and we actually need to go out and survey new, unknown, or poorly known territory and then try and feed that back to the expert geolog geologists and cartographers back on Earth. We're putting all those things together all at the same time by simulating it here at Aquarius. Great, Chris. Well, one last question, and this is the really big one. Do you have any words of advice for any students that might get to see this video who might want to do what you do? When I was a student in uh, elementary school and middle school and high school, uh, I was really inspired by some of the things that were going on in the world, but I had no idea how I could possibly do those things. People were, for the first time, leaving Earth and, and walking on the moon and flying to places that we'd only dreamed about. And it, it was way beyond impossible. It was comical, but I thought someday, maybe, even somebody like me might get a chance to do that. What I did was I said, okay, I'm going to keep that as my long-term goal. And every time I get a choice, I'm going to try and do something that sort of nudges me in that direction. I'll maybe learn how to scuba dive on a weekend, or uh, learn how to swim better, or learn how to fly, or whatever. Just, just Those are all things that interested me anyway. And, and in my case, it took me to university. It took me into flying airplanes with the military. I got to become a test pilot, which for me, even if I'd never become an astronaut, to have a chance to test and fly airplanes was something that really suited me, just like some of the astronauts. Tom is outside as a doctor, or uh, some of the folks who've been professional deep sea divers, or chemists, or rocket engineers, or whatever. But they all kept that one long-term goal in mind. They kept sort of shepherding their lives along towards that eventual goal, kept their bodies in shape, and it's amazing what the future can bring if you just keep yourself ready, to keep giving yourself new skills, keep your mind open.
Great. Well, thank you so much, Chris, and good luck to you and the rest of your crew throughout the rest of your NEMO 14 mission. Good luck. Thank you. Thanks a lot, Heather. We'll take luck over everything. Luck is great. <laughs> and thanks a lot. We'll be talking with you. Sounds good. See you later.